Hello and uh, welcome to Cutthroat Mafia. We're gonna teach you tonight how to play the game, right? Get ready to die. That was very intimidating, uh, Double D's, but uh, we're gonna go ahead and explain the rules and how they work uh, right here for you, right here, all right? Here we go. D's, you take it over. Oh yeah, let's do it. Here we go. So this is Mafia. Mafia is a game where everyone will gather together and draw a card. You are gonna basically be one of two people. You're either gonna be a killer, the Mafia, trying to kill everybody, or you're a townsperson trying to figure out who the Mafia is and kill them before they kill you. You're gonna draw a card, you're gonna get Mafia or townsperson or something else which we'll talk about later. Each round of the game is in two parts. The lights are gonna go off and you're gonna walk around in the dark, that's the night round. That's where the mafia is walking around killing people in the dark and you're trying to survive. When a dead body is discovered, the lights go on and that enters into round two. So when the lights come on, you then try to figure out, based on where everyone is, who the killer is. And you nominate people, put people on trial, you have a vote and you vote out who you think the mafia is. And if you're right, they die and then that's how the townspeople win. And this continues until either only townspeople remain and all mafia are dead, or all the mafia have killed all the townspeople. Let's go over some of the rules when the lights turn off. The lights are going to be either on the wall or going to be on a uh, light switch on a court. When you're walking around in the dark, you wanna keep in mind that there could be dead bodies lying on the floor anywhere. So you wanna move slowly and carefully so that you don't kick someone in the face or hurt anybody. So shuffle your feet, nice and slow. And don't walk around like this because you might accidentally touch somebody and then they think they died, then that's bad. So don't walk around like this, keep your arms to yourself anywhere, anywhere safe, all right? Protect yourself. Continuing to move doesn't mean that you have to get all the way around the room every time. That's actually the best way to do it because that's how you find dead bodies. However, all you're required to do is move. That means you wanna cover at least 10 feet. All right, so let's say you walk in a direction and you find out, oh my gosh, I hear somebody coming toward me. You can turn around, come back, just continue to move. If you're the mafia, you kill people by cutting their throats in the dark. Now, it is your responsibility as the mafia to make sure that the people you are killing know that they are being killed, okay? So all willy-nilly walking around in the dark like this doesn't work. You wanna make it really clear that you are killing this person. Great way to do that, find them in the dark, grab their shoulders, slice their neck. That's how you make sure that they know that you've killed them as mafia. As town people, remember that the real game is what's happening in the trial period, in the light. If you feel somebody grab you in the dark, rule of thumb is no fighting back. You're welcome to kind of slowly shuffle away, but if someone grabs you, let them either kill you or let you go. There's no fighting back, throwing elbows. Don't like suddenly jerk back because you could hit someone in the face, and that's bad. So let's say you, you know somebody's trying to kill you. They grab your shoulders and they slice. Well, let's say they accidentally slice you here, or on the side, or even on the back of the neck. You're still dead, because the intention of grabbing and slicing and killing you has happened, you're dead. Now, when a mafia kills you, you have to die as silently as you possibly can. No big, like, dramatic, I'm angry, all right? Die silently, swallow your pill, is that a thing? <laughs> Swallow your pride. Swallow your pride, just die silently, okay? Um, you die wherever you were killed, unless the mafia holds on to you. This is called dragging the body. If they walk with you, holding you like this, uh, then they're taking you somewhere to deposit you as a body, somewhere maybe kind of off on the corner of play. Again, you're quiet, you don't make any noise, you just go wherever they uh, take you, and then when they release you, that's when you silently fall on the ground. You can drag bodies around the room. However, if you're dragging a body, you can't kill other people while you're dragging a body. You have to drop the dead body first before you can kill again, all right? If there are only five people left at the start of a round or less, you are not allowed to drag anymore. Another thing is, let's say you're walking around in the dark and you bump into somebody and you go to slice their neck, but it's another mafia. How do they explain that to you in the dark? They just pat you on the head. Now you know you have found another Mafia and now you can work together and try to kill everyone uh, or not vote each other out. One thing you don't want to do is kill quickly and run away. Because if you kill quickly and run away, somebody might be trying to pat you on the head and hasn't found your head yet. And now 
you're gonna later on as a mafia think that people are getting sliced in the dark, not dying. So if somebody dies loudly and you hear it happen, or you think you hear it happen, you can't just call dead body and turn the light on. You still have to physically feel the dead body before you can turn the light on. As you walk around the room, uh, you can't crouch. Now, people walk like it's in the dark, that's fine. But if you start bending down, you're changing where your neck is and the mafia can't find you. So, also, it's not really safe. People could walk around and kick you in the head if you're crouching down and things like that. So, you want to just make sure that you're walking upright. You don't, uh, you can't walk on top of any type of furniture. You can't go underneath any tables. You can't, uh, you know, go on or under anything. You have to continue to walk around the room. Also, uh, if you're mafia and you kill somebody, you can't put them on furniture or under tables or anything along those lines. You have to make sure that they're dead on the floor. Blobbing is a no-no. Blobbing is when you kind of gang together with somebody. So you're touching shoulders the whole time, you're holding hands the whole time, you're any way uh, that if they were to die, you would know it immediately. That's uh, blobbing, and you cannot blob in the dark. Also, blobbing can mean uh, protecting. So if I know that I'm trying to protect a VIP player, an important player, and I walk in front of that person and you know go like this, so that if anybody dies, it's gonna be me before them. I'm also blobbing because I'm protecting somebody else. You also can't protect lights. If you're the mafia and somebody comes and tries to get to a light, you're gonna, I mean, you can just stand there and kill them every single time and they'll never get to the light. So you can never blob around a light or protect a light as a mafia player. Also, as a mafia player, you can't protect bodies because let's say you're dragging bodies and putting them in a corner and blocking and guarding them. Every time somebody walks over towards you, you're a spider in a spider's web. You're gonna kill them, put them behind you, kill them, the whole game will be over. So, no blobbing around bodies, no blobbing around lights, no blobbing around people. Everybody needs to stay separate. If everybody blobbed, it'd be a terrible game and no one would have fun. Let's say you think you found a dead body on the ground. You think it's a dead body. Always double check first. Make sure it's an actual dead body. Carefully, don't like poke and prod people in the face. Once you have confirmed it's a dead body, just go, dead body, shout it out, all right? Once dead body is called, anybody is allowed to turn the light on, okay? Mafia can turn the light on. Mafia can also call dead body. Mafia can kill as many people as they want until the lights are turned on. That means even after dead body is called, if Mafia is feeling gutsy, they can keep killing. It's just dangerous because you could get caught red-handed as the lights are coming on. Now, let's say you think you heard a dead body, body fall, or let's say that uh, you touch something and you think it's a dead body and you call dead body, and the lights go on and there's no dead body, you are now eliminated as a player, you're dead. The reason being is because if the lights go on and there was no dead body, but let's say there was Mafia dragging a body or something, you just ruined the game for them because you were really ambitious. So uh, you wanna make sure you know there's a dead body. Kind of an unspoken timer is in everybody's heads where after about a minute has passed, if nobody has called dead body, then that means that we're gonna go turn the lights on because the mafia has not been doing the job in killing people. If there's a dead body that nobody found, that's fine. Then we go to the trial. If there's no dead bodies, then one of the mafia is going to die. If you're walking around in the dark, and you stumble into a dead body. You're allowed to call dead body as long as you know it's actually a dead body. But you don't have to call dead body right away. You can instead walk over to the light, find the light switch, and call dead body and turn the light on right away. If you are being killed as the light is coming on, if it's any sort of gray area where you're like, I'm not sure, then pro you're probably dead. So you die, and then the mafia that just killed you is gonna probably just get called out because it's gonna be very obvious. Let's say you're a mafia who sliced somebody's neck and you're walking with them, dragging them, and the lights go on, that person no longer stays in dragging mode. They just fall to the ground because that is also indicating that this person is a mafia and this dragging is happening because they killed me and then everybody's gonna know that's mafia. That's what happens if killing is happening while the lights come on. Dead body has been called, lights go on, everybody freezes. There could be one dead body, there could be eight dead bodies. But at that point, everyone freezes, you look around, you try to figure out who is the mafia based on where people are standing, based on how they're acting, based on where the dead bodies are. Now we enter the trial portion. Everybody gets one accusation per round. To make an official accusation, you say, I first, so-and-so. That means you think they're the mafia and you wanna put them on trial. If somebody agrees with you, 
they can say, I second so and so. That person is now officially on trial. There's no take backsies. There's no takes backs. There's no takes these backs. <laughs> There's no takes these backs. But we need two people to be on trial. So we're gonna have to first and second somebody else. There always has to be two people on trial and everybody always has to vote. You cannot, as I said, make more than one accusation. So you can't first one person and second somebody else. If you first somebody and something convinces you that you are wrong and you wanna change your mind, you can take back your first and make that accusation on someone else. As long as that person has not been seconded. Also, if you've been seconded, you do not have the right to vote anymore. You have to vote before you're put on trial, because once you're on trial, you can't vote anymore. Uh, once you are killed, when you are a dead body, you are not allowed to speak anymore. You can't make any indication as to who you think killed you. So no eyeing the mafia. If someone says, oh, you must have been dragged, you can't be like, no, I wasn't dragged. I, no saying anything, no making indication, you're dead. All right, don't ruin the game. So this is how the trial works. Now that we have two people that are on the block, that means that they defend themselves. They can say anything they want to convince people that they're not the mafia. However, you can never reveal what your card is. So you can say, I'm innocent, I'm a townsperson, I didn't kill them, I was at the bar, I was at the park. You can make up a story, you can have a lot of fun with it, or you can just say, I was in this corner and I never moved, I couldn't have killed anybody. So the two people on trial get to defend themselves and then everybody votes for who they think is the mafia. Once you've heard the defenses of the people on trial, you uh, are ready to vote. To vote, all you do is walk to the side of the room of the person that you think is guilty. Whoever has the most votes is the person that is going to die. They're gonna be voted off. You can split the vote. That means that an equal number will go to either side and, uh, and then nobody will die. But in general, going to either side, whoever has more people is gonna be the person who dies. Once they die, once they're voted off, they can only say, I'm Mafia or I'm not Mafia. Mafia don't want to tell everybody who they killed and didn't kill on the way out the door, because uh, that's gonna hurt the other Mafia later on. Uh, townspeople can't say who they were. You just walk out into the dead room. After the trial, all the dead bodies are gonna go into the dead room. And from there, you get to watch on a night vision camera what happens in the dark, you get to listen in on the trials, and pay attention because you could be resurrected from the dead as a zombie and get your revenge on the mafia that killed you. Once the trial period is over, we're back to the night phase. So the lights are gonna go off again and we're gonna do everything again in the dark. The lights are gonna come on, trial period again, and this is going to continue until at the end of the game, either only mafia are left or only townspeople are left. Now, if we get down to uh, just a few people at the end of the game, and all of a sudden the numbers aren't working out where two people can first and second this person and first and second this person, then what happens at that point is whoever does get seconded is going to be allowed to choose who they go on trial with. Let's say there's only three people left. Two people will have to decide together to put somebody on trial. That person will then pick one of the other two people to put on trial with them and then it's gonna be up to the last person who's not on trial to decide who dies, and that'll be the end of the game, essentially. How does the Mafia win in the dark? How does the end of the game happen? Here's how it works. The lights will go off, and then Mafia will kill people until there's nobody left to kill. And then they will turn the light on, take a bow, you're the Mafia, you just won the game. If it ever gets to a point, and they turn the light on, and there's only one townsperson left, at that point, the game is over. Mafia loses. Let's talk about specialty cards. So you're not allowed to say what your card is ever or show anybody your card or indicate what your card is. The doctor. If you're the doctor, it means that you have access to the resurrection stone. Now the resurrection stone is any item that we place in the room. Though when the lights go off, the doctor will come and retrieve the resurrection stone. Then they will take the resurrection stone and either keep it themselves or give it to some living person in the dark. If that person is then killed after they receive the resurrection stone, or if the doctor is killed while still holding the resurrection stone, they die in the ground like any other dead body. When they are found or any other body is found and the lights come back on, they then raise up from the dead and say, I have the resurrection stone. The resurrection stone is now out of play because it's used and that person is still alive. And they can use whatever information they gathered from being killed in the dark uh, to try to point out who their killer was. That's how the resurrection stone works. Now, if you're given the resurrection stone in the dark and you do not die, 
all you have to do is walk over and put it on the table. Because for the next round, the doctor is again going to have to go find the resurrection stone and then it all starts over again. They keep it or they hand it to somebody else. Grandma with a gun. If you're the grandma with a gun, you're basically an alarm system and get to call dead body on yourself. So, as soon as the mafia cuts your throat while dying, you get to go bang, 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 bang. When you hear bang, 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 as a townsperson, mafia, whoever, the lights can go on immediately. Nobody has to find or touch the dead body. Bang, bang, bang is dead body, and the lights can go on. The detective card. So the detective card means that you're able to investigate people every uh, trial round. Every time the lights are on, you're allowed to investigate one person. The way you do that is first you have to announce that you're the detective by saying, I'm the detective. And then after that, you ask someone, were you mafia? And they're going to, uh, they're going to answer you truthfully. The only exception to this is once all the mafia are dead, if uh, the godfather is in play, at that point you'll ask people, are you the godfather? Now technically you're allowed to ask people if they're the godfather before all the mafia are dead, but it doesn't really make a lot of sense because it's not going to help you in that moment uh, because the godfather can only kill at the end of the game. As a detective, you're allowed to investigate people all the way up until the vote. After the vote, you're not allowed to investigate anybody if you haven't investigated them already. As the detective, you never have to investigate anyone because you're probably going to be a target for the mafia once you say that I'm the detective. So you never have to, but as a townsperson, you're probably going to want to help the other townspeople out. It's up to you to, to decide at which round you want to reveal that you're the detective and use your special power. Rival Mafia is the same as a Mafia, same rules. If you get sliced, you tap the other Mafia on the head, you don't die. You're killing, they're killing. However, the only difference is that in order for the Rival Mafia to actually win, they have to be the only one left at the end with all the Mafia dead. So, you wanna be kinda of throwing your other Mafia under the bus at the right time to make sure that everyone else is dead. Because if, in the end, you are left alive with another Mafia, you actually lose. The Millicard. The Millicard is essentially a false Mafia. What that means is that if you have the Millicard, you play as a townsperson, you try to win as a townsperson. However, if the detective ever asks you if you are Mafia, then you have to say, yes, I'm Mafia. Even though you're not Mafia, you just have to say, yes, I'm Mafia. From there on out, you can say whatever you want. You can say, but I didn't kill anybody, I'm innocent, please don't kill me. But you're not allowed to say, I'm the Miller. All right, you can never say what your card is, except for the detective and the magician who have to announce their power in order to use it, all right? Um, now, as the Mafia, if you're investigated by the detective, you say, yeah, I'm the Mafia, but then you can act as if, oh, I didn't kill anybody, please don't kill me. People might think you're the Miller, but you can't say, I'm the Miller. Again, you can never say who you are. If you are the Miller and a Mafia is acting as if they're innocent and could potentially be the Miller, you can't be like, oh, I know they're not the Miller, we should definitely kill them. You can't indicate that you are the Miller at any point. Once you are executed, once you are voted out of the game, you only get to say, yes, I was Mafia, or no, I was not Mafia. You never say, I was grandma with a gun. You never say, I was the Miller. You're not allowed to say what your card was. You only say, I was Mafia, or I was not Mafia. Unless you were the Godfather. Then you say you're the Godfather. The Godfather, this is a fun one. The Godfather is essentially a sleeper Mafia. That means they don't die in the dark if their throats are sliced. They just pat them on the head, just like any other Mafia would do. And they continue to play the game. Uh, but they never kill anybody as Mafia. The Godfather is never allowed to kill anyone until all other Mafia are dead. Once all other Mafia have been killed, the Godfather wakes up and he starts killing everybody that he can. All right? So now he's the Mafia at the end of the game. If the Godfather is asked by the detective, are you Mafia? He says, no, because he's not, he's the Godfather. Even though uh, if he wins, the Mafia wins, and if the Mafia wins, he wins, Still, he uh, says no if he's ever asked by the detective. Uh, however, if the detective ever asks him, are you the Godfather? At that point, he says yes. If the rival mafia and the Godfather are both in play, they are on separate teams. If all the regular mafia are killed, leaving the Godfather and the rival mafia both alive, the Godfather is then allowed to start killing. 
because they are on separate teams. Postman is basically a revenge card. If you get voted out of the game, you get to go postal and kill somebody to take with you. So after you're voted out and people say, were you mafia? You go, no, but I was a postman and I'm gonna kill someone. And then you pick someone to kill. Prior to being put on trial, again, you can never say that you're the postman until after you're voted out. If you are killed by the mafia in the dark, you don't get to kill somebody with you, you just die. The postman only gets to kill someone if they're voted out. The magician card. This means you're allowed to raise someone from the dead. As a magician, you have to first announce, I'm the magician, and I would like to raise somebody from the dead. That means you'll be able to take somebody from the dead room and bring them out for voting purposes, and they are now a zombie for voting purposes. Now obviously, you have to wait until somebody's in the dead room and has been there for a round before you can raise them from the dead. So you're not going to be able to raise anybody from the dead before the second round ends. Now, you also have to wait until the voting is done on the second round in order to raise somebody from the dead. That way they come out, they have no part in the vote for the second round. Then, they have to survive an entire round as zombie. And then once they've made it through that round, they don't indicate, they don't speak, they don't say it was rock guy, they don't do any of that kind of stuff. They just, they're silent, they're a dead body. However, when it comes time for the trial, they are allowed to vote for who they think did it. Now being a zombie is very powerful because everybody's gonna, for the most part, follow whatever you say. So make sure that you vote accordingly uh, because everybody's gonna think you actually know who the killers are. As a zombie, the only time you're allowed to speak is if you bump into a dead body in the dark, you as a zombie are allowed to, at that point, call out, dead body, that's it. As the magician, you do not have to use your power after the second round. You can wait until the third or fourth round, but you always have to use your power after the trial has ended. Cupid card is a fun card. The Cupid card is an extra card added to the deck. If you draw the Cupid card, you get to secretly pick two people to be soulmates. You do this before any of the game even starts. Usually everybody will gather in a circle, put their heads down, and close their eyes, and then you as the Cupid will pick this person by touch and this person by touch. They'll lock eyes, make sure they know who the other soulmate is, and they'll put their heads back down. You put that card down, and then you also draw another card, and that's what you are for the entire game. So you're not gonna be Cupid throughout the game, it's only prior to the game. Then you could be the Mafia, the detective, a townsperson, you could be anything. The way soulmates work is that if any of uh, either of them die, that means the other one dies of a broken heart. So if one of them is voted out, the other person will yell out, oh, my heart is broken, and you know, they die as well. If one of them dies in the dark by getting their throat sliced, when lights come back on and they see that there's a dead body on the ground, they'll go, oh, you know, they died and they'll die as well. The point is, is when they find out that their lover has died, they die of a broken heart immediately. And the two people you pick could both be Mafia, they could be the detective and a townsperson, they could be anybody. No one will know. We're gonna have a timer going on during the trial periods. That's to make sure that the game keeps moving, because if somebody's dead, you don't want them being dead for too long, they wanna get back in the game. So uh, if the timer goes off before two people are put on trial, that's when the timer decides who's on trial. Here's how it works. If one person has one vote, that person's automatically on trial. If two single people have a vote each, they're both gonna be on trial. If uh, multiple people have votes, but one person has two votes, and they are now on trial, that person's gonna be on trial. If you're the only person on trial, you're the one person with the one, one vote, or you're the only person with two votes, you get to decide who goes on trial with you. So even if four separate people have one vote each, and you have two votes and you're on trial, you could decide anybody in the room uh, to go on trial with you at that time. That's how you work that out. Now, if nobody has any votes at the end of the timer period, that means that we're going to pick a card randomly. Whoever we pick is going to die automatically. That's how we make sure the game keeps moving quickly. If at the end of the timer, multiple people have one vote, but it's like maybe four different people and nobody's put a second on any of them, we do the same thing then if nobody's gotten voted for. We just pick one random card from the deck and that random person's going to die. And just some quick house rules. Take your shoes off in the foyer, watch your food and drink 
over the carpet so we don't stain anything. Please don't bring any alcohol into the apartment. It's not that kind of party night. With 20 or 30 people all talking at the same time, it can get very loud. Please keep your voices down for the sake of the neighbors. If somebody's trying to explain rules to the entire group, don't talk at the same time they're talking so everybody can hear and understand. Remember, this is a game night. It's supposed to be fun, so don't personally insult people. Don't th take things personally. If you're accused or whatever, just have fun with it. It's a game night. It's fun ready to die. Mm-hmm.